All right, I got the machine set up and we're gonna start sewing. So here's the burp rag I just folded, burp cloth. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew across both of the, the top and bottom edges. And you can sew whatever seam allowance you prefer. I am going, I usually do a 3 eighths of an inch or a half inch, just depends. Um, these edges line up really well, so I'll probably do a 3 eighths of an inch. But the bonus is that if you have problems and it doesn't line up right or it doesn't catch one of the layers, you can always go back and just sew a bigger seam. You know, don't, don't get lost in the details. Sewing should be a lot of fun, so, so don't stress out about that. And on my machine right now, I have a walking foot. You do not need a walking foot. I have a walking foot. I am doing some quilting projects as well. So I just left my walking foot on. This is the normal all purpose foot and it works perfectly fine to do this exact same sewing project. I've done it many times with just a traditional regular sewing foot. So again, don't, don't stress about that. It's not a big deal. Um, let's see, so we are going to start Looking at my little sewing gauge or my measurement thing up there. Oops, I'm gonna put that down. I always hold my threads when I start sewing because otherwise I end up with a bird's nest and that is never fun. So always hold the threads when you start sewing. And I always take pins out as I sew. I don't ever sew over my pins. Um, I have done that accidentally in the past, and I have broken needles, and I have broken pins, and neither do I think is a good, good idea, really. Let's see, so I take the pins out. I'm still doing my 3 eighths of an inch seam. Like I said, uh, half an inch, 4 eighths would be perfectly fine, too. Whatever works for you, whatever makes you happy. Again, sewing should be so much fun. It should be, it should be one of those little simple joys that, that we build into our day that bring us joy, just make us happy. So, so don't overcomplicate it. Sometimes less is more, you know, so just, just enjoy the process, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Let's see. On this one, I'm gonna do three eighths again, and I'm going to hold the threads again to start. Once it catches, it's fine. Here's another um, little tip. Like, I can get this one, but is, let's say that this got a little too close. Um, put your needle down first, then lift your presser foot, then pull your pin out, or whatever you're doing if you need to reposition. That way, the needle in the down position holds your place so your sewing doesn't get kind of erratic or crazy. So here we go. Stitch three eighths of an inch. And almost done with this part. Last pin. All the way to the end. For me, this is one of those projects that's just kind of fun. Um, I do sometimes like a challenging sewing project. I like to do a lot of heirloom sewing and I find that to be a little more challenging, but this to me is just a fun project and it should be fun, not stressful. So here are my seams. Let's see, let me check out both sides. Yep, I've got all the layers on that side. Let's check out the other. Got all of them on that side too. But again, like I said, if for some reason my stitching dipped down, I would not be upset about that. Just put it back in and just take a bigger seam next time and catch them all. Okay, so now we have what looks, kind of looks like a pillow cover. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it right side out. Some people, here's another little sewing thought for you. A lot of people like to clip their corners when they turn. I actually don't like to clip my corners. I feel like clipping corners weakens them. So what I do is put my hand in there. 
can get there. Well, not my hand, I put my finger in there and fold, fold that little seam allowance down. And if I feel like it's not as sharp as I want it to be, I can actually go and use a pen to gently coerce it out. But I mean, I felt pretty good about that, but I was just showing you as an example. So I do that on all four corners. Just fold the seam down. And then this one could use the a little bit of help. And again, don't pull it super hard because I've done that too and it kind of can pull out some of the threads. But just gently pull it out. And then same on that side. That one came out nice and tight. I could trim my threads a little bit better. I really like to use the the little cutter on the side, so I kind of get into the habit of doing that. And it leaves just a little bit of a tail. Okay. So, I'm gonna move the machine back a little bit for a minute. Let's see, because we need to look at what we have. So, I like to place it on the table. I'll move that further and you need to get all of your layers sitting properly. So I start on the bottom layer. And again, this is much easier if you're not trying to talk on your way through it. Anyway, start on the bottom layer, get it all smoothed out. Start on the top layer, get it smoothed out. I work from the the edges towards the center because this is where the center can kind of absorb. I guess absorb, well actually it's going to absorb because it's a burr cloth, but it can also kind of, um, what's the phrase? It, it's forgiving, there you go. It can be very forgiving if you have any extra fabric that it needs to pick up. You can just kind of pull it into the center. So we're at this point and now we need to finish by stitching two more lines, one across here, across this fold to hold everything down, and then one over here. Now this one over here, we need to make sure it goes through and catches that layer underneath. So I personally, you can do it whichever way you choose, I personally usually start on the folded edge. I usually stitch it first. And I'll put a couple pins in not too many, but a couple. Hmm, I might put four in. And we'll stitch that first. Pull my machine back up so I can reach it. And like I said, this one I find to be the easier one to sew. Oops, let me make sure I get my threads. For me, I don't know how your machine is, but for me, this foot, I kind of like to line the edge up right with the edge of that foot. And your foot, hopefully you have something similar that you can line up and then just stitch. While you're kind of holding everything together. if you want completely personal preference Oops. clip that and then clip the starting thread you can also take these um, threads and tie them together into a knot and then cut them off you can do whichever works for you now the second side again we need to definitely pin it you need you're going to have to kind of feel where let me move this sewing machine out of the way again for a minute. You need to kind of feel where the layers come together. Feel where they come together and then I put a pin there. Oops. 
Let's see. We'll do four pins again. Three. And again, it does not matter at all. Oops, got a runaway thread, stray thread. Okay, now to get this piece done or this stitch done, there's several different ways that you can do this. You can take a pencil, even a light, a regular pencil, just really lightly, or this is a sewing washout cloth marker and get your ruler and you can draw a line that you can stitch on to make sure you get all those layers. Oops, more threads. You can do a marking pen with disappearing ink or a mark be gone. You can use this um, oops, tiger tape. You can, you know, actually stick it on here and then sew to the right or the left of it. Um, you can use blue painter's tape. This is pretty wide, but you could do this. Um, you could even put it on your machine and see exactly, I think I'm gonna do it like right there. See exactly where you wanna stitch and on your machine, on the arm of your machine, you can put tape over here so that you have something to line it up with. This machine, which I've had for a long time, and I hardly ever use this tray on it because it can just come off. I hardly ever use it. So imagine my surprise when I put it on for this video and it has this little doohickey. So that's kind of convenient. It slides and that's actually the farther, farthest it goes. So, so we'll do that. But there's lots of different things that you can do to help you to better, help you to better be able to measure to make sure that you catch all of those um, layers because you really do want to catch all those layers because the first time it gets washed, the burp rag, it will probably come apart. So, and you're just gonna stitch. And I can also say that sometimes I'm in a hurry and I just wing it. I just don't worry about it and I just have eyeballed it and stitched from top to bottom. And it was perfectly fine, so. Worst case, you pick it, the stitching out and go back and do it again. So that's the worst case. And honestly, I don't think that's a horrible thing. So that's just kind of my thoughts. Anyway, stitch top to bottom, all the way down. I'm so not used to using this on the side. It's hard for me to keep remembering to check into it, but it's there. Clip your threads, top, bottom. I clip all of my threads as I go. I really just don't like finishing a project and having tons and tons of threads hanging off. This way, when I clip the last threads, I'm done, like here. So here we go, here's your burp rag. So it folds, I love how it just folds along those stitch lines. And there you go. Nice little, adorable little burp cloth. I hope you enjoyed this. Leave me a comment below. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, if you have any suggestions of anything else you would like me to sew or knit or crochet or weave or whatever, just let me know. Um, I always, always enjoy getting comments and hearing from you all. So I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you can bless someone by making them some burp cloths and give them for the birth of their new little baby. Babies are such a joy. I always remember a quote by Carl Sandburg. It said, um, babies are God's opinion that the world should go on. I just think that that's beautiful. So be blessed, my friends. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.